This is Alan Farley from FX Empire. Please subscribe to the FX Empire YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about trend following indicators. Trend following indicators are technical tools that measure the direction and strength of a trend, and uh, just but just within the chosen time frame. Some trend following indicators are placed directly on the price panel, while others are below the price panel, either stretching from one band to another or zigzagging across a zero line. We'll look at five uh, trend following indicators today uh, using uh, the Apple chart, which everyone's familiar with. First up, we're going to look at a simple moving average. Now, to pull up the simple moving average on uh, the uh, advanced uh, charting uh, in uh, FX Empire, uh, you go and type in search. It's probably the easiest way to do it. You can use a drop down menu as well. Just type in moving, we have moving average. Now, this right away defaults to a simple moving average, but you could choose all kinds of moving averages. Uh, today, just a little bit later, I'll talk about exponential moving average and show some of the differences with a simple moving average. But for starters, we're just going to use a simple and we'll use a 50 period. Now, it's a period, not a day or week, because we could be looking at hourly charts and then it's just a 50 hour chart. Or uh, what do you do with a 15 minute? You call it a 50, a 50 period moving average of a 15 minute chart. But we're looking right now at daily. Uh, now we're done and we have this red line and all this red line is is uh, whatever you're setting in. So if the setting is 50, it's counting up 50 bars, looking at each one of those 50 prices and dividing by 50. And whatever that value is, that's the value that's going to go onto that part of the plot. Now, over time, a simple moving average is going to turn higher and lower in response to price. But again, as an average price, it's going to move slower than price action. So crossovers between the moving average and price are very important. Uh, as you can see, sometimes crossovers uh, produce very good signals. Like here, we have a little double top breakdown uh, and um, uh, but other times you get whipsaws because there's just not that much trending going so if you go and you have a strategy where you're uh, holding on to a position until it crosses the moving average well here and here you're getting lots of whipsaws so they might not give you the best signals so that's a simple moving average and it's very very popular but uh, many traders and many technicians over the years have uh, tried to get faster signals they want, they want their buy and sell signals faster than what they get from a simple moving average. Uh, in that case, they could turn to a um, second moving average, which is an exponential moving average. And I'll put this one right on the same plot, time plot, and I'll put a different color on it so you can see it distinctly. So this is a 50 period exponential moving average as opposed to a 50 period simple moving average. Now look at the difference in the signals. Notice the slight differences in calculations. Now, as a 50-day exponential moving average, this is looking back 50 periods as well and then dividing by 50, but it also has an additional calculation that places greater weight on more recent price bars. Now, what this does is it produces faster turns in the moving average uh, when there's a trending, when there's a reversal or, or a thrust above or below the moving average. So you get earlier signals. As you can see, the simple moving average is still going sideways right here on the 25th of February, while the exponential moving average turned lower on the 16th of February. Now, this is good and bad. Uh, one problem with exponential moving averages is it tends to produce more false signals because it's faster, so you get, tend to get more whipsaws. Now, one way to overcome this is to look at multiple time frames in an uh, in, in exponential moving average. In order to show you that, I think what I'll do is just go ahead and change this 50 period SMA to a 200 period EMA. So that you can see a 50 200 combination, which is a pretty potent combination uh, in, in today's markets. Now you can see from this, here we have the 50 day exponential moving average. Here we have the 200 day. Now we don't want the 200 day to get to touched very often on an uptrend. And when it does, it very often is in not exact price, but in a region of where there's going to be a buying opportunity and an uptrend or a selling opportunity in a downtrend. So with in Apple's case, if you look back, say so we go back just a couple more bars, right? As you can see, we have a number. We got one, two, three, four, four tests on the exponential moving average. Now, price did very well at the moving average, except when it started to lose momentum and we had a little failed breakout here. Next time it came down, it broke it, and we're right in the middle of this zone. I call it the uh, 5200 ping pong or pinball zone where you're going to get pushed back and forth between these moving averages. And this is sort of a no man's land where you're waiting to find out what the trend's going to do. 
Uh, as a trader uh, who wants to be long, you almost want to wait for this to go down to about the 113 level because that looks like a much better opportunity. So that's the exponential moving average. Uh, let's move on and look at another moving average. Another, excuse me, another, another uh, trend following indicator. This time we're going to look at ADX. Now ADX has a few different names. Uh, in uh, FX Empire Advanced Charting, it's called ADX DMS. But you'll also see it as uh, ADX uh, DMI. And so some of the terminology can be a little bit confusing. So um, here we have a, a 14 period uh, ADX. Now ADX, and I'll come up real high because it could be really confusing, produces three lines. It produces a, uh, a, a center line, which is called the ADX, but also produces what's called this DMI plus, and a, a DMI plus and a DMI minus. Now, all it's doing is separating out the uptrend component from the downtrend component. Now, when a, uh, a DMI uh, negative or DMI, a minus DMI is above a positive DMI, that means a downtrend. Whenever a positive DMI or, uh, is above a negative DMI, that's considered to be an uptrend. Now, uh, DMI doesn't work real well in flat markets. As you can see, there's not much going on here, and you're just getting whipsawed left and right. What you're really looking for with DMI is these, these bigger extensions up, uh, up and above. Now, uh, in response to where the DMI is, you'll get the ADX line will go and either start trending uh, one way, the other way, or start to flatline. Now, in this case, we have an interesting divergence. Take a look here. Uh, the, uh, DM, the ADX has gone all the way down to 12, come back up to 35, but we have a downtrend. Well, D, uh, ADX is non-directional. In other words, it's neutral about whether it's showing you an uptrend or a downtrend. It's showing you trending. So uh, a very strong uptrend and a very strong downtrend will produce a very similar a, uh, ADX or this black line uh, pattern. So here we have, this is, this is a trending market. This is a trending market. But, uh, excuse me, this is a trending market. This is a deaccelerating trending market. One is starting to move towards a range. And then we have this range, and now we're starting to get more trendy again. Now, the level at which it uh, gets up to gives you some strength of the trend. In this case, this is the downtrend that uh, ADX confirmed right around, right around here, which is after, well after this, uh, this top bar. So it's giving you lagging signals. But now we have, we have the, red bar, the, red bar, the red line above the green line and a rising ADX. Well, that is a developing downtrend. doesn't mean it's going to last forever because we have to look at other chart capacities. But that's it, showing trending or when trends are moving into range about markets and as trend following traders, you want to be you want to be taking exposure long or short into these rising ADXs, which tells you you're getting a more and more trending market. You know, in this case, you're going short. In this case, you're going long. Uh, but the similars again are the same. And ADX, uh, it's best used in longer time frames because you don't want to get whipsawed. And it's a very misunderstood indicator because the three lines look real squiggly. And they, they, they look very tough to interpret. Okay, now we're going to move on to one of the most popular indicators in the market. And that is the MACD, which is Moving Average Convergence Divergence. Now, Moving Average Convergence Divergence has been around forever. Uh, when it was originally formulated, there was no, uh, no histograms used. I believe that Dr. Alex Elder uh, uh, was the first one to use uh, uh, or at least popularize MACD histograms. Now, that's another type of indicator in which it's comparing price action over two uh, time periods, uh, generally a 26 period and a 12 period. And it wants to see if there's more trending going on in the 12 period than the 26 period and vice versa. In other words, when there's more trending in a, a shorter time frame, in a more recent time frame, uh, it, it's going to be uh, indicative of a more trending market. Now, all that the uh, histogram does is it takes a space between uh, the MAC di the MAC D line, which is this black line. Now this red line is a nine period moving average of MACD. So it's all it is, it's a lagging MACD because it's going and giving the average price of the v MACD over nine periods. So these, uh, cr these crossovers are considered to be signals. Here we have a crossover, here we have a crossover, here we have a crossover, and here we have a crossover. Now this is considered to be bullish. This is considered to be bearish, especially when it's occurring in an extreme. But take a look at how the um, uh, MACD histogram gives a whole different set of signals. For example, right here we have MACD histogram bottoming out in a negative 
which theoretically is going to give us a double bottom pattern right around here. Now, if you take a look at price action, the, the uh, stock or Apple bottomed out, what, about four bars later. So this actually produced, since it produced a, it produced a higher low when Apple was going to a lower low, it was a bullish divergence, and it's give you an information that uh, that the stock, uh, up, the downtrend was coming to an end. Not that a new uptrend was replacing it, but that it was finding a, a low or possibly a tradable low. Now, crossovers through the center line uh, give you where bull and bear power are. So when when uh, MACD histogram is above the uh, center line, that's considered to be bulls in charge. When MACD is below the center line, that's considered to be bears in charge. Now, if you take a look at recent price action, it's getting interesting here. We actually have the lowest MACD histogram back about, oh, about two weeks ago. But uh, Apple hasn't fallen that much since. In fact, it's traded at almost the same price. And we're almost crossing over the zero line into positive energy. And we almost have this crossover here from a low level. So see, this, uh, this crossover from this high level is a very good signal. Crossover from this low level may be a very good pullback buying signal uh, if you're using that type of strategy. So it's a very, very valuable tool. And that's the reason why it's extremely popular with trend following uh, traders. OK, let's move on. We'll move on next, uh, finally, to the parabolic stop and reverse. Now, the parabolic stop and reverse is a totally different kind of trend following indicator. It's also called parabolic SAR. Para, parabolic SAR. That's parabolic stop and reverse. Now, there's no, there's no panel down here. All you see are these little dots or squigs, whatever. There's a little bit, a little bit of wide squig. Either they go up or they go down. It can be very confusing if you don't know what you're looking at. Now, all the parabolic stop and reverse does, I mean, it's in the name. It's a stop and reverse. It's applying a hidden trailing stop uh, and that gets hit and changes the direction of the parabolic star indicator. Now, when it's going up, that indicates a rising trend. When it hits that stop, it turns it down, and then it indicates a downtrend. The problem with uh, parabolic star is that it's always giving buying, buy and sell signals. If you notice, there's we have one bar over here that's an uptrend, and the next bar over here that's a downtrend. So that's uh, that's typical of parabolic star. And uh, the way to overcompensate to compensate for that is to uh, add other filtering indicators to keep you out of non-trending markets. So it's going to tell you what the trend is, but it's not going to tell you the intensity of the trend. And again, it crosses directions for whatever reason in the calculation. It hit a trailing stop. Now, there's another use to uh, the parabolic stop, uh, stop and reverse, which is a very interesting use. Uh, some traders will use it to place their trailing stops. So say you go, uh, you go short over here, you put a... You put a, 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 a stop loss right at that dot, and then you move the dot down as price moves down. And then if it gets too close, your stop's going to get hit. And uh, I think that's the point. It's trying to keep you in the trend and uh, keep you out of the way of any sort of whipsaws. And, uh, but this distance, see, the distance, say, from price to, this, uh, to these dots is part of the calculation. So you could tighten that up so it's closer to the bars or loosen it up so it's further away from the bars and still use it. Again, say you bought a dip uh, dip trade or you bought a pullback trade that's looked like a double bottom to you on a 60 minute chart. So you went and bought it, you put in your stop down here at 102 and you just rode that thing all the way up to about 115 until uh, your stop here is gonna get hit. As you can see, right here it's getting hit when it's crossing through the line. So parabolic star can be very, very powerful for use in uh, stop loss management. 